Hello, hello and welcome, welcome. Silray is here with Dawn of War 3 talk. So Dawn of War 3 had an announcement trailer for it and by now I have watched that announcement trailer enough times to convince myself that I wasn't hallucinating it and that it wasn't April 1st, I double checked the date even to make sure that this is actually real and it's actually coming <laughs> because oh my gosh this is massive news for me but I will get back to that in just a second firstly background footage background footage is the usual stuff you are used to seeing on my channel over the last couple of months um, because well, well for two reasons firstly I didn't have Dawn of War installed uh, I didn't feel like installing it making sure everything runs per correctly making sure I can record it correctly um, just for this one video and secondly I have no idea because I didn't take a proper look and uh, digging to see who all would I be hit copyright claims from on the video if I actually included Dawn of War footage it might be nobody uh, it might be a 10 million people I didn't look I didn't bother looking but let's talk about Dawn of War 3. I don't really want to talk about the trailer because I'm not here to dissect the trailer. I am here to talk about Dawn of War, Dawn of War 3 and why I am so fucking excited about this. So um, people who watch my channel don't really know this, but, um, but I have massive RTS background, right? Uh, I just don't make videos of RTS games because I have sunk so many hours into them that I rather make videos of other stuff which I find fun as well. That's just how I, I have been doing on my channel, right? My channel has very few videos of single player games, but partially because single player games are not something I focus on. I've never really focused on single player games. I, I play single player games from time to time. Uh, I enjoy them from time to time, but I just don't go back to them. It's like. I play, play single player games through and so forth and then just never really revisit them. Um, whereas multiplayer games are RTS and MMORPGs. Those are the two game categories I have probably put like something like 70 to 80% of all my video game playing time into. Those are the two game types I am absolutely in love with and which I will continue playing forever. So, Starcraft Brood War, play that. Oh, heck of a lot. Warcraft 2, oh, same damn thing. Um, Warcraft 3, not so much. It really it just somehow didn't feel right to me. But then again, I also played Starcraft 2, the Wings of Liberty version, the, when the original Wings of Liberty came out. I laddered on that. I It was the only campaign uh, out of the um, three campaigns I actually bothered to play through on the hardest difficulty even. Um, brutal was it? Yeah, Brutal was the high, hardest difficulty on that. I, I bothered play through it on Brutal. I didn't play the other ones through on the highest difficulty. All that, all that good stuff. Actually, I haven't been playing too much Starcraft 2 uh, on the... On the Legacy of Void either, in all honesty, I just haven't. But yeah, so I've been doing uh, a lot of RTS over the years, but the main culmination point of my RTS play was Dawn of War, the first one. That was, I just fell on that game so hard. Firstly, because I have been playing uh, Warhammer 40k miniatures in tournaments. Like, I, I played those, and I still own Warhammer 40k miniatures, like a whole heap of them. And such, I still love my miniature games. Uh, as you might have found the Maelstrom's Edge unboxing video on the channel too. Because that was a big deal to me. Um, anyway, anyway. So Warmer 40k, I was into that already. Then they make an RTS game out of it. And was like, yeah, this is mine. Too bad the game did taper off over time. And wasn't really all that big of a success and Dawn of War 2 never really captured me on the multiplayer front because it like it, it feel like they stripped out parts like they really did for the from the multiplayer aspect it was fun it was more fun the campaign uh, in Dawn of War 2 uh, at least to me especially since I played it in co-op right uh, in co-op it was hilarious fun uh, but in the multiplayer just felt felt bad to me now with Dawn of War 3 being announced and uh, me being all giddy about it already, it's like, uh, this might become my entire YouTube channel, maybe? Can I resist the temptation and just keep making videos of other things? 
we will see. We will see what will happen. I'll, I'll, I might leave some of that up to you folks eventually. But anyway, and also the fact that I am not as young anymore. My uh, my APM uh, is probably probably down below 150 at the moment uh, when it comes to comes to APM terms, actions per minute for anybody who is not into the RTS terminology. Anyway. Well, I believe my APM is probably under 100 now. I haven't done enough lately of RTS practice. Anyway, 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 let's get back on track. And that's the track is the Dawn of War 3. So, uh, a couple of things we know by now. Base building is back from Dawn of War 1. Oh, hell yes. Thank you. That makes multiplayer instantly better. Um, they have st Somehow they say they have streamlined the cover system. Uh, to make it more intuitive, I guess, or somehow, some such. Uh, we will. I, I want to see this in action before I give any thoughts on it. Right? I, I need to see this in action because if it's some kind of a, a completely and utterly dumped down system, which is really easy, like you press a button, everybody is in cover from all angles, all that stuff, uh, with no micromanagement required. Um, that that's gonna that's gonna suck a little bit. Uh, I do want some of the squad micro back because that was big part of what made Dawn of War a Dawn of War. Essentially made it really stick out. The individual squad micro that was fantastic. I love that part. Um, Obviously, obviously, uh, we have seen three races in the announcement trailer, the Eldar, the Marines, and the Orcs. And it's claimed that the game is centered on these three races. Now, I will honestly say that, um, uh, to me, Warhammer 40k always feels a little empty without chaos. Like, I can live without Tyranids, even though I own the most Tyranid models like of all the miniature models I own, uh, I, I am a big Tyranid fan, but I can live without Tyranids. Um, chaos though, if you include Marines, you I always always feel like you have to include Chaos. So possible DLC, uh, expansion, whatever you wanna call it, um, should add Chaos, even if it's not in the base game, like on the release. Because that's how I feel. Uh, that, that's that's to me what feel like fills the universe, like the uh, Marines versus Chaos, and then Orcs do their own thing and harass and destroy everybody, and Elders are in their own ship somewhere on on their own planets and watch everybody else annihilate themselves. It's like that. <laughs> That, that to me is the warmer 40k universe in a nutshell, and uh, essentially it's what I really enjoy about it as well. So, uh, I don't want to drag this on too much anymore, so basically those are the couple things we actually know since the trailer came out, and I am actually really happy about that. Um, uh, I, I will happily set aside all the Tau and all the all that craziness, uh, Dark Eldar and Sisters of Battle. Uh, focus on few races, make sure they are balanced for the multiplayer, because does anybody remember Tau stealth units? Um, stealth suits? Anyway, um, make sure they are balanced for the multiplayer, make sure the single player campaign is fun for those who are really into it. I will definitely play it myself, but I don't see myself like doing it more than once, probably. Uh, it will be the multiplayer for me and that's about it. And make sure the game is polished and good, because if it comes out a buggy mess, I am gonna be so very disappointed. So many games now come out as buggy mess that I am already disappointed and I rarely buy uh, buy or pre-order games now until I know what the heck the reviews say. Is it any good? That's because most of the game studios are starting to really lose my trust on their products. Well, there are still some really good gems out there, but many of them are going down the drain, especially on the AAA side of publishing. Anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. Hopefully this was, well, enlightening to you. Now you at least know where my time is going when I play uh, video games, MMORPGs and RTS games. Well, for the most part. Anyway, as said, thank you very, very much for watching. I'll see you folks another time. And also, uh, please let me know if you want me to dissect the... Uh, trailer because I could do that I could do that so let me know